Hello, good afternoon. Today is the Bishop's Desk. Hope that you're well, in good spirits. Pray that God is answering your prayers. Hope you're having a great day. Um, just want to encourage you to tell you to continue um, to trust in the Lord and continue to seek God and to uh, draw nigh unto him because God is able. God is able. God is able to make the difference in your life. Um, I tell you, man, God is so good. God is so good. And you can't make it without him. You cannot make it in this life without him. I'm just hearing so many, so many uh, messages and getting so many um, messages from people, how people are going through and, and having to deal with the challenges of life. A lot of relationships are not being able to weather the storm. Marriages are breaking up. People are dividing, divorcing, and separating, and and they people just will not. They will not surrender unto the Lord and do it the Lord's way. Men will not turn to God and love God and let God teach them how to love their wives. Wives will not turn to God and learn how to submit to God. And then let God, Jesus, teach her how to submit unto her own husbands. And so I tell you, I'm so grateful and I'm so glad that me and my wife decided to listen to the Holy Ghost. And we decided to do it God's way. It haven't been easy. It's even not easy now. But the Holy Ghost has kept us together. He has drawn us closer together. Um, and, and we know without God, we would not have been able to make it 25 years, 26 years of marriage. And we still striving and pushing forward. We know that we would not have been able to raise our children, but God has allowed us to raise our children and to continue to teach them what a family looks like. And so I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that God is allowing me and my wife to show our family what a family looks like. Uh, a father I'm, I give God all the glory and the honor For teaching me How to show my sons What a father looks like A father he doesn't abandon his family A father he doesn't walk out on a wife A father don't mistreat his wife In front of his children He don't do those things And so I'm glad that God spoke to my heart And taught me how to be a father and a husband And, and, and how He has touched my wife and, and has humbled my wife and showed my wife how to be the best version of herself towards her husband and, and how to be uh, discreet before her sons and her, her children. And so you can do it with the Lord. But I'm going to tell you what has happened. Social media, it has destroyed so many families. Social media has, social media has robbed a lot of people of the knowledge that they were raised in and the knowledge that their parents brought them up in and it has robbed them. People sitting in there spending hours, hours, hours upon hours scrolling through social media and, and then thinking that everything that they see is how they life should be Husbands, they're on social media hooking up with women and and cheating on their wives through the internet. One time you had to go out and go to the nightclub and meet another woman to cheat on your woman with. Now you don't even have to do that. You can open your phone up and, and have a relationship and lay right beside your wife in the bed. You don't have to go nowhere. You don't have to you don't have to change your schedule or do anything and can cheat on your wife. You don't have to do nothing as a woman. You you used to have to dress yourself up and go out and then and then end up cheating on your boyfriend or your husband. You don't have to do none of that no more. You can paint your face and then add that um that fake um thing that make you look better and then Cheat on your husband. Man, if y'all don't think that Satan has become more cunning to divide the family 
And this is why our children are being destroyed and being lost because mothers are not being mothers. Fathers are not being fathers because they spending more time on social media than the children are. And families are being separated and divided and destroyed because of social media. And, 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 and man, y'all got to put that stuff down, man. And y'all got to draw now unto the Lord and, and, and show these children a more excellent way how to do things. And fathers, you got to show your sons and your daughters what they should be looking for in life. Fathers, you got to show your sons how to love their, their, their wives to be by loving their mother before them. You have to show your daughters what a man's supposed to look like when she begin to search for a man. You got to give her some instruction. You got to show her the way. Mothers, you got to show a daughter what she ought to look like, what a true man is looking for by closing up her bodies. I haven't, it is breaking my heart to see my young daughters and my young sisters, You, they walk across your car and you can see the bottom of their cheeks and they, are they, are they, are they, are they tail. And, and how can a father and a mother let a daughter, she's 15, 16, 17, come outside with a pair of shorts and you can see the bottom of her cheeks and you don't think these old dirty pedophile men that, that, that have no Holy Ghost in them, that they gonna let her walk by and not try to, and not try to entice her to lay it, to lay with her young body. Man, y'all better get it. Y'all better get it. Y'all better get it. I'm just telling you. Y'all better pass this message on to somebody and somebody better listen so your daughter don't come up on the side of a milk carton or you can't find her or she come up missing or so your son, he don't catch a charge for, for rape because he couldn't have no, he had no self-control of touching that young girl. Man, y'all better get yourselves together and get your minds off this social media and y'all better start listening and following Christ so that you can raise your family and your and and just because you raised your children don't mean you don't you finish. You got grandchildren. You got grandchildren. You know, what is it for your your grandchild to 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 see your grandmother in the nightclub? And that's what they running into, running into their grandparents into the nightclub. Come on, man, we got to do better. We got to do better, people. We got to do better. We got to do better. We got to do better. This is not why Christ Jesus died. So we're in James chapter 1, uh, chapter 2. We've moved on from chapter 1 and 2. And and in James chapter 2, uh, verse 1, 2, and 3, probably going to be tied together. Because it talks about, it talks about uh, regarding the rich and the poor, not treating not treating a rich man better than you treat a poor man. Um, and so he talks about this in the word of God, okay? So he says in verse one of chapter two, my brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory with respect of person. In other words, there is no respect of person in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did not come and die for just one group of people. He came and he died for all. And, be, and which means he showed love towards all the human race. And if you are a child of Christ, then that's the mentality or the heart you should have. To show love to all of human mankind. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and godly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment. So we talk about the church, the building. If 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 a if someone comes in and and they're dressed nice and and they appear to be uh financially well off smell good and then there comes into the house of god the sanctuary because this is what this talking about the assembly the house of god 
because it has been known that there have been some times in some churches where certain seats have been reserved for some people. The only seat that has that I've known uh, that has been reserved in our church, and that is for the mother of the church. Uh, we 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 generally would take a chair. And we would set it off to the right side or the left side, whatever, of the pulpit closer. Because we acknowledge her as the mother, the, the, the spiritual mother over the entire church. She's the one that, that nine times out of ten, not all the time, but she's a widow. She has served the house well. She has served the house of God well. She has raised daughters, sons. She has brought in uh, the poor and she has fed them. And she has been a mother to them. She's been a mother to children in her neighborhood that, that come from broken families. Her children have come home with friends that come from broken families and she has, she has mothered them and so now and she has worked in the church and she has she has gotten to a, a, a older age now where her her work now um, is to show the 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 younger woman because she is the aged woman and she's now to show the younger women how to love their husbands, how to be discreet and chaste how to how to adorn herself and so now she sits in this place of of reservation in the church and it's a church of honor of her work her legacy that she has left behind and and we acknowledge her she prays for the church the children the pastor and so that's the only chair that I've known to be set aside in the church and I've never seen the chair where the father of the church is always the mother because Jesus spoke to his mother when he was on the cross and he said woman behold thy son and he acknowledged her he didn't acknowledge his father he acknowledged his mother and so that's the only chair in the church that I know that is reserved. Every other chair in the church should not be reserved just because a family may have put a donation and paid for the chair. The chair was de uh, dedicated to a family. Um, even though the chair was dedicated to a family, that, that dedication doesn't mean that nobody else should be able to sit in that chair. And so God is saying, if anybody come into your assembly um, and he's rich and one come in poor, the rich man shouldn't get the better seat. You shouldn't, you shouldn't make the, the poor man stand until everybody is seated and then seat, seat him because he, ha because he doesn't have the fine clothing or you don't want him to sit beside somebody that has fine clothing and offend them. Because now people will be offended if you set somebody beside them that is poor and doesn't and don't smell good. Yeah, nobody wants to sit beside anyone that, that has a or wreak a, a a strong body odor. And 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 that's natural. But at the same time. That's some of us without Jesus. That's some of us without Jesus. And sometimes it's not always our body odor that reek um, a smell. Sometimes it's our personality that reek a smell. And, and give off a bad odor. And so he says... 
treat people the same way when they come into the house of God. Because Jesus Christ was not respect of person. He's not. He didn't come and die for just one group of people. He came and he died for all. And so when people come into the house of God, don't treat the poor man less than you treat the rich man. He says in verse three, and ye have respect to him that wear the gay clothing, the nice clothing. You have respect the person to him and say unto him, sit thou here in a good place. You put him in a good place and he's done nothing really to earn to sit in that good place in the house of God. Nothing. He come every now and then Okay, he sends his tithing and his offering. Okay. But when we get into the kingdom and into the house of God, when we enter in, we all are one. So you can't separate the two. But this is what is said. You say, sit thou in a good place. And then you say to the poor, stand thou here. You don't even tell him to sit. You tell him to stand thou here. You see what the scripture says? He said to stand thou here. Or if there's somewhere else available for you to sit. But if it's not anywhere else available for you to sit. That's not going to offend them. That are rich. Financially but, but poor spiritually. You're going to tell him to stand. And then if a seat that's appropriate to your eyes come available, then you can sit there. Not in the house of God. Not at CCOC. Not in this church. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. We will never, ever treat anybody that is poor as if they're the least because we understand that the least is the greatest in the kingdom of God. What do I mean? The people that are poor and they have the least, God cares for them even the more because they don't have. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. Everybody is one and the same in the house of God here at CCOC doesn't matter if there's a seat available we're gonna sit if I ever saw anything like that I would be offended and I will call it out because everybody is somebody everybody is somebody doesn't matter your educational level it doesn't matter your financial level it doesn't matter what you have to wear it doesn't matter that you you had a mental breakdown and you don't, you don't, you maybe not wash and clean yourself like you once did because the spirit allows me to see that you've had a mental breakdown. That if you didn't have that mental breakdown, that you just might, you wouldn't be uh, walking around with the same clothes on for days. But if I show you love and compassion, it just might be the very thing that helped you break through that mental breakdown. It's the lack of love and compassion that people show, that they don't show towards people that causes people to remain in these broken places. But when we begin to show love to people that are in broken places, then it's the love of God that will heal the broken places. People. Or sit here under my footstool, he says. Under my footstool because you're not worthy to sit on my level. You're not worthy to sit beside me. So sit under my footstool. That is, very, that is a very proud spirit. That's a very proud spirit. And we know 
people that have a proud spirit that the next move is they're going to fall. A proud spirit is the evidence of the fall to come. Right? And so he says, and ye not then partial in yourselves, not being partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts. Now, because you have taken this position of putting the poor last, you're judging a person within your thoughts because they're poor. You're saying within yourself, they don't deserve. Who are you? Who am I to say what a person deserves or what they don't deserve? And this is the position that you're taking when you say that you can't sit here and you have to stand there because I'm going to reserve that for the rich man and I'm going to leave you here until something comes available when there's many seats available. Now you're judging the person within your own thoughts. And because you're judging them, what the Bible says your thoughts are, they're evil thoughts. Because you're being partial. And we don't serve a partial God. We don't serve a partial Savior. He was complete in everything. He addressed everything. He says, and are ye not then partial in yourselves? And you become judge of evil thoughts. These thoughts within you are evil. And again, I know people don't want to uh, sit by somebody. It may make them sick. That's fine. That's fine. But don't have those evil thoughts in you that that says you don't want to sit there because they're less than you. I get it. You may not be able to sit near some people because of the way they smell. That that's that's normal. I even would understand if you were sitting on a bus or if you were sitting on the subway and the person uh um smell kind of bad and you move. I can understand that because it just it was just smell was just overwhelming. But let but don't let that be the reason why uh because of your thoughts, because of what they look like and what they smell like. Don't let that be. Let it be all because it made you maybe made you sick and that was the only reason why you moved. But how about this? How about before you move? If you're on a bus and you and you on a subway, how about before you move, you lean over and you and you and you give them twenty dollars and say, "Hey, here, take this and let this help you along your way with maybe some of the things that you need to take care of yourself." How about that? How about that? Do that and then move. Acknowledge them and then move. Because acknowledgement goes a long way. Just acknowledging somebody, you know, from a humble space, a meek space, acknowledging them that you understand that they're struggling and that they're going through. And it's nothing that you can do for them physically um, to change their situation. But I can give you all that I have to just help you along the way. That's godly. That's godly. Then he says, hearken, listen. My beloved brethren, have not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith? Those of us who don't have all the money that we would like to have, 
we become richer in faith because we have to trust in God to make a way for us. And so we become richer in our faith. A lot of us, we want to be rich. But a rich man declines in his faith. Because he don't need God anymore. He has everything. He don't need to press his way and pray unto God. He don't need to seek God for more. Because he has everything. So God has made the poor man rich in faith. So what would you rather have in this life? Rich faith or rich pockets? Some people are going to say both. But you can't have both. Can't have both. Because the more you have of one thing, you're going to deny something else of the other. The more you don't need, the more you gain, the more you obtain, the more you have, it decreases and make your needs less. So when your needs are less, you ask for less because you have more. But the less you have and the more you need, you always find yourself in a position of meekness to ask. So as long as you're before God asking, your faith is increasing in him. Because you know in order to ask him, to receive from him, you must be following him in his word. Yeah. 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 And so the Bible says, my beloved brethren, have not God chosen? He's chosen the poor. If you don't have a lot of money, God chose you. If you have just what you need to make it through and everything is all right in your life, God has chosen you. This is why the righteous man should be happy. Because he's chosen of God. Have God not chosen the poor? Of this world to be rich in faith. The rich man would love to be able to have the relationship that you have with God. The rich man would love to be able to have the peace that you have in God. The rich man would love to be able to not be so stressed out the way that he's stressed out and, and have the stress level that you have. The rich man would love to have the relationship that you have with your spouse because his spouse is 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 just shallow and 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 don't have much to offer. Buy and pay for everything, don't know how to do anything. Money do not change. Hear me, money do not change the natural man's needs. A human being still need natural love and natural affection from another human being. I don't care how rich you are, you need natural human affection and love from another person. Because natural affection and love cannot be brought. Not natural. Fake love can be brought. Fake affection can be brought. Temporary love can be brought. Temporary affection can be brought. Because you can buy somebody to do the things that you need them to do on a temporal basis. And they'll do it. And then they'll be gone once they're paid. But that gets old to everybody. Just because a man is rich doesn't, man, doesn't mean a man don't want to be loved by his family. Just because a man is rich doesn't mean he don't want to be respected by his wife. Just because a woman is rich, she do, it doesn't mean that she don't want her husband home rubbing her feet in her back. And, she don't, and, she, and she's void of the affection, needing the affection of her husband. 
does none of that, none of that means that. And so God has chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he had promised to them that love him. Hey, Google, what's the definition of heirs? Heir is used as a noun to mean a person legally entitled to the property or rank of another on that person's death, similarly to successor and next in line. Do you want to hear air used in an example? No, no. God has legally through Christ Jesus made us the believer. He has made us heir of the kingdom of God. He has promised to us the kingdom of God. He has promised this to us. He has made us heir of the kingdom where he is which he had promised to them that love him. We love God. Why? Because we obey his commandments. And because we love him, he has made us heir, the promise, the recipients of the kingdom. When we die, we will inherit the kingdom of God. That's the promise. But while we're in this body, and we, are, and we are poor, we have become rich in our faith. And so because we become rich in our faith, which means it makes us, makes our belief stronger, stronger towards us being heirs to the kingdom. And we believe strongly that when we leave this, we will be present with God. Because we love him. But if I had everything in this world, if I had all the riches of this world, my faith would be weak in him. And I wouldn't even pay attention that, I, that, that he has made a way for me to be heir in the kingdom. But ye have despised the poor. Some of us despise being poor. Some of us despise being poor. And some of us despise the poor. We look at the poor and say, I don't want, I'll never want to be like that. Okay, I get it. Nobody wants to be homeless. No. Nobody wants to live outside. No. Nobody wants to be without food, clothing, nor shelter. No. But those that love God and 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 obey his commandments will not be living outside will not be homeless because he's going to make a way for you. He's going to make a way for you. But ye have despised the poor. You don't even want to be associated with the poor. But he made the poor rich in faith. And most of the time when we talk about poor people that are living outside and won't move inside most of these people have lost their minds a lot of them lost their mind they fooled with witchcraft uh of 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 they have been fooling with the witchcraft that and that spirit of witchcraft that's in drugs because that spirit of witchcraft it's in drugs that is spirit of of hallucinating that spirit of, of feeling good outside of the norm a lot of those people have lost their minds fooling with drugs and the spirits that's associated with drugs there are spirits that's in drugs because they change the natural thought of your mind and say that it is okay for you to live like this so we know that these are people that have been possessed by Satan. And so we call them poor people. But all of these people are not poor because some of these people come from rich families. Some of these people that we see come from families that's richer than you. 
and you see them and you never know who they are. And if they got their minds together and went back home, they could live a normal life probably better than you. But we, but we, but we associate them with being poor. And they're not all poor. They may be poor in spirit. But, they, but they've lost their mind. Losing your mind and being poor is two different things. Being poor, have going without is one thing. Being poor in spirit is another thing. Hey Google, what's the definition of poor? Poor has three different meanings. Starting with the most common one, poor can be used as an adjective to mean lacking sufficient money to live at a standard considered comfortable or normal in a society, similarly to poverty stricken and impoverished. Is that the meaning you were looking for? No. All right, poor can also be used as an adjective to mean worse than is usual, expected or desirable of a low or inferior standard or quality, similarly to substandard and below standard. Is that the meaning you were looking for? No. Got it. Finally, poor can be used as an adjective to mean of a person considered to be deserving of pity or sympathy, as in, they inquired after poor Dorothy's broken hip. Do you want to hear a few synonyms for poor? No. Poverty stricken, below. Um, she said a lot. Living below, poverty stricken, somebody to pity. And so God say, you despise these people. Do not rich men oppress you. The poor man does nothing to you. He doesn't look down on you. He doesn't he doesn't judge you. He doesn't he, he doesn't separate himself from you because you don't have. But a rich man he'll oppress you. A rich man will will cut off the way for you to get to him. He will even cut off the way for you even to become rich. He will even he will even segregate himself to the point where he will make it where you're not able to stay around him. He will redline you and cause you have cause you to have to move out. He will gingerfy you. And cause you not to be able to um, stay and have to move. This is what the rich man will do. This is what the same man will do that you reserved that you reserved the seat for him in the house of God and made the poor man stand up. The rich man will do that to you. But you want to be around the rich man. You want to be associated with the rich man and your poor. He'll oppress you. And draw you before the judgment seat. And he'll tell people this is why you shouldn't be around. He'll judge your economic um, um, financial levels. Your, your educational levels. Your skin color. And he'll judge you. And say you don't belong in his presence. Or within his club. Or within his neighborhood. And he'll judge you. And then he'll come into your assembly. And you'll give him the best seat. Do not they blaspheme the worthy name by which by the which 
ye are called. They blaspheme the worthy name, the name of Jesus. Because we have been called by the name of Jesus. Because they don't need him now. You go to church, you serve in God, and you still poor. Who does that? That's what they'll say to you. Because it's not about it's not about the now. It's not about the now. It's about the eternal. Because the noun is temporary. The noun you can't control. The noun is controlled by God. The noun you can't stop. The noun is inevitable. The noun is going to end. But the eternal will be forever. The eternal is already created for you. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. If you love your neighbor, the Bible says you'll do well because it's the royal law to love thy neighbor as thou love thyself, as I love myself. As thou love thyself, love thy neighbor. And that was the commandment that Jesus Christ left with promise to love thy neighbor as thou, as thou love thyself. The Bible says if you do that, you'll do well. Who is your neighbor? Those that you come in contact with. And sometimes you have neighbors are, that are there for just for a moment and then there are sometimes you have neighbors that for, that is there for the eternal forever for your lifetime and he said to love thy neighbor love the people that you come in contact with on a daily basis everybody in the world is your neighbor Everybody is your neighbor. The entire human race is your neighbor. And so God say love them. And if you can love them, which is the royal law, you do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin. I'm going to stop right there. Because if you have respect of persons, you commit sin. If you treat one person better than the other, you sinning. If you if you desire one person over another, you're sinning. If you give one person more than the other when they both deserve the same, you're sinning. Showing respect of person is a sin. So we're going to go more into the sin of respect of person on next week. I pray that the bishops, that's been a blessing on to you today. And I pray that it has enlightened you and has turned on the light in your eyes not to be respect the person and that God has chosen the poor man to be strong in his faith. God bless you. I love you. And this is the Bishop's Desk.